Okay, this is the second part of the tutorial to show how to re remove the background from an image. And to uh, so this will allow you to create a combined image such as the one you see here, in which I've overlaid photos of different species of fish onto this map of southern Florida. And so this allows you to bring in photos without their background so that you get a nice uh, clean uh, image, combined image. Now I'm using uh, Photoshop 5. This is Adobe Photoshop CS5 Extended. Now some of the earlier techniques that I showed you, you can probably do with earlier versions of Photoshop, but you may need the later versions of Photoshop in order to do some of the techniques I'm going to show in this tutorial. So let's, uh, let's just quickly uh, look at what I showed previously, and that is when you have a solid background, you can use what's called the magic wand tool and uh, what you want to do uh, in this case is after you bring in your image and it's going to automatically set it as the background uh, over here in your layers uh, navigator what you want to do is you want to go under layer and select new and you want to create a layer from that background and hit OK, and we'll leave it named uh, the layer zero. Now that's a critical step. Uh, you have to do this uh, for, for all of the um, steps that you take to remove the background using uh, this approach. And so now you can take the uh, magic wand tool and all you have to do is click on the background and it automatically selects everything that is that color of the background. And then if you hit the delete button on your keyboard, then it removes the background. And that works very well for images such as this. Okay, let's take a look at an example that has a more complex background. In other words, not a solid color. And here, the photo of this red snapper, you can see that the background has some texture to it. There's an object. This is the tail of another fish, apparently. There are also some shadows. And so we're going to have a, a difficult time here uh, selecting this entire uh, pattern with just the magic wand. You can see if we try to select it that there are some space places that are, are not selected that needed to be selected. So we can get around, partially get around that uh, if we undo the magic wand. We can uh, try uh, another tool and if you hold down the icon here uh, and instead of selecting the magic wand tool, we select what is known as the quick selection tool. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to swipe this around the image of the red snapper. And you can see it's doing a pretty good job of selecting and outlining the red snapper. It didn't get everything, but uh, let's uh, let's delete that and uh, let's see, let's uh, zoom in a bit um, and uh, take a look, uh, for example, here at this shadow. So now what we can do is we can take another tool, the lasso tool, which will allow us to carefully draw around that shadow and we'll hit delete and there it's gone and you can continue doing this with all of the uh, other uh, I'm not being very careful here but uh, but you can you can outline all of the other spots that uh, need to be removed if you miss something you can just go back and take it out and so let's go back to zoom out and uh, you can do the same thing you can uh, outline uh, this object over here and get rid of it and you keep doing that until you've uh, until you've got a nice outline done and so you can do this fairly quickly 
And then again, all you do is uh, create a new layer, which I've done over here. And then we're going to bring in that, uh, that file with uh, the photo of the red snapper with the background removed and hit place and again it brings it uh, into the center of the photo and you can uh, at this point you can uh, hold down the shift key and resize it and uh, move it to the position you would like. Uh, you can also uh, do, do things like uh, flip it horizontally if you want it facing in another direction and uh, you can do that by going to uh, edit and transform and you can say flip horizontal and there it's uh, facing a different direction and you can do other transformations and uh, I'll point out over here, you'll notice that uh, what I've done is I uh, have a different layer for each of the images that I brought in so that I can manipulate them individually if, uh, if need be. And if you uh, want to remove a layer, uh, then you can uh, just uh, delete it and it's going to take it out. I already had, I already had one in here, here from uh, previously. So that's all. Uh, that's all there uh, is to using the either the uh, magic wand tool or the quick selection tool to remove the background. Okay, let's take a look at a more complicated example. Here we have a photograph of a salt marsh mangrove system in Australia, and perhaps we'd like to bring in a photo of a an instrument or a person. Let's bring in a photo of Wes. Now Wes in this photo is standing in a Louisiana marsh and we want to transport him to northern Queensland to this uh, salt marsh mangrove system. But you see of course the problem is we have to remove the Louisiana marsh and sky background from this photo of Wes so that he looks like he's actually standing in Australia. How do we do that? We can't use the approach that we used previously because it's going to be very difficult to select this complex background. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use something called mask. And what I've done here, uh, I have the background, which is the background photo, and I have brought in, uh, created another layer and brought in and placed this photo of Wes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the quick selection tool again and I am going to use it to uh, outline very quickly the entire image here of Wes. Uh, now you see a little problem here and that is that the background selection has bled into the image of Wes and we don't want that. So to remove that is uh, as actually very easy. What we're going to do is hold down the option alt key and this s changes this little icon here from a plus to a minus and then we just paint back over the area that we want to exclude from that selection and uh, if it if it again selects some of the background you can paint that out uh, again like that and it's pretty smart it, it'll it'll pick it'll pick those up uh, you can refine it you can zoom in on it and uh, make this a little bit better than I'm, I'm doing this very quickly just to give you an idea of how, how this works. And so we can get um, we can get all of these. Um, let's see, we got everything um, pretty, that's pretty good. Um, and so now we've got most of the background selected. The only things that are not selected are 
uh, these spaces uh, under his arms and uh, between his legs. And to, to do that and to add it to the area already selected, we have to hold down the shift key. And we do that and it's going to quickly select those areas. And again, if you have a problem, you can hold down the Option key and paint out uh, any accidentally selected spots. So I'll just leave it like that. Uh, okay, that looks pretty good. So we've got all the background uh, pretty much selected. There, there are a few little uh, glitches here. Um, let's see. There's that. And I think that's it. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to uh, this uh, little uh, spot here, and this uh, icon uh, adds a pixel mask. And we click on that, and you see what it's done is it's uh, created a mask uh, over Wes's image. Now, that is obviously not what we want, so we go over here to uh, this spot, and we do an invert pixel ma mask. And so now you see that uh, we've got a pretty good image of Wes, and it actually looks like he's uh, standing in this Australian uh, salt marsh mangrove system. Uh, we can move him around, and it looks pretty good. And so that is a very uh, quick demonstration of how to place an image from uh, uh, with a complex background and overlay it onto another image so that they look like they belong together. Well, that's the end of this tutorial to show you how to remove backgrounds from images. This is a key step to ultimately developing animations as well as to uh, creating videos or segments of videos that make use of a montage of photos or other images or other graphics in a creative way. And that'll be the subject of future tutorials.